Right guys, that was a bit of a long intro, but uh, there we go. But anyway, this week we got Riot Zone. Uh, Riot Zone is a scrolling beat-em up. Uh, it was two player in the arcades. I'll explain this one now, but only single player on the um, PC Engine. I say this game was originally made by West Weststone or uh, West One, whichever you want to call it. Um, they made it for Sega. Came out in the arcade. It's called Riot City. And when I played played the arcade, I always thought I always thought they looked like this game because pretty much it's the same game. Um, I say Sega owned the rights to the bosses, the characters, and the character names, apparently, and Weststone re retained the licenses to the actual game, like they did with the Wonder Boy games, I suppose. And um, they decided to release it on the PC Engine. Uh, so they teamed up with a company called Agenda Co., I think it was, according to Wiki. Um, and then Hudson Soft, and they released it, and it was called Riot, uh, Riot, um, Riot Zone, sorry, it was going to say Riot City, yet. Uh, called Riot Zone, or Crest of the Wolf, as it was called in Japan, and it came out a year after the arcade one. So, in the options, you got your, basically your difficulties, and that's pretty much it. So, let's get into it. So he's interested in some other Sega game. Anyway, you've got two characters to pick from. You've got the faster character and the slower character. I'm going to pick Tony. Which is a fantastic name for a fighting character. As you'll see when I when you hit the enemies in this, uh, they got some quite funny names, really normalish names that you wouldn't expect. I say in the arcades, this was originally a two-player game, but uh, on your unfortunately it is single-player. There's uh, five levels to this game. Uh, there's a boss at the end of each level, uh, and each got each got like a bounty you collected or a point you collected essentially. So, let's get into the uh, level one. Here we go, Riot City, or welcome to the Ministry of Funny Walks, because <laughs> the characters and half walk pretty strange in this game. It's like Monty Python all over. So basically, you've got your standard uh, little punch combo. Um, 
sometimes he, he does change, sometimes a knee, sometimes it's a kick, sometimes it's like a back punch. Uh, you can jump kick, uh, you can press two buttons together, and you can do like a, a special attack to get the characters off you. Takes a little bit of energy when you do that, mind. You can also throw your characters, and that's pretty much it in this game. There's no infinite punch as far as I'm aware. Uh, there's no multiple combos or working anything out. It is literally just hit the button, uh, hit them, or jump and kick them, and that's or throw them. That's pretty much it. It's quite a it's quite a basic beat 'em up. Um, you see, this does follow along the lines of the arcade game. Uh, the characters do look different in you though, and uh, the levels are roughly about the same. But obviously, the arcade ones look a little bit nicer. And uh, before anyone asks, this is quite a basic beat em up in the arcades as well. You also got like a, a jump split kick as well. Get it two things at once. Nah, characters are not walk silly in this game. What I've noticed in this game as well is even if I'm slightly below the character, like quite a bit below them, you can still hit them and uh, they will grab you and throw you as well. So you, you've got to make sure you're really far off each character, otherwise you you, know, you will accidentally get hit all the time. So you're like nowhere near on the plane that he's on. You can throw them in different directions. Uh, some characters will, once you defeat them, drop food. That is quite a powerful move, but it does take quite a bit of energy. Uh, later on in this game as well, some of the uh, on-screen characters, they'll hit you and they'll take almost half energy off you. So you do get a lot of lives in this, but uh, you don't last long. I still can't get over the way he walks. <laughs> he walks pretty stupid in the arcade one, but on this one, it's like Monty Python. Do not want to be on a lot of characters when they get up off the floor, like a lot of beat maps. Ooh. See what I mean? If they catch you, you are going to lose a lot of energy. There are some differences between this and the arcade. Like on here, there's, there's basically three enemy sprites at once on the screen. I don't think it goes any more. The arcade one's got about four or five, maybe six at times. I say graphically, obviously, the arcade one is better. But it, it is pretty good. It is pretty decent conversion for what it is. Uh, graf the um, graphics are nice and colourful. Uh, one, one sort of thing I would do like about this, the music's really good. It's got sort of like this 80s sort of rock, sort of hair metal type soundtrack in there. It's quite cool. Ah, damn it. Quite tricky to finish it on uh, one credit, I think. I've noticed as well, you can hit enemies even though you're not that near them. Even if it's a little bit of a gap between your punches, like, they, they'll walk into... Well, not so much walk into it. You will be able to hit them. See? I'm not actually making contact with him. See, hitbox is actually quite wide. Yeah, that's another lift gone. Do you ever get a lot of lives in this game? Later on, there are enemies that you need to learn their sort of tactics. Otherwise, you're just going to get hit all the time. There's a sliding enemy later on. Ah, oh, God, he's a pain in the ass. They can slide from literally off screen right across the, right across the screen and kill him. See, it's a shame this actually wasn't two player. It would have been a little bit more fun if there was a two player option. I say this game was trying to jump on the bandwagon of sort of uh, Final Fight and I think at the time. I can't remember whether this came out before Final Fight though. I'm not sure which one was actually first. I say gameplay wise, it is 
it is quite basic. There's not a huge amount to it. I could have done with like maybe a back attack, a la sort of like um, double dragon. So, ooh, you got it then. See, your engine goes down really, really fast in this game. I think he's done a little bit too much fighting, to be honest. I don't know, he's, like, he's really drunk. <laughs> ah, cracks me up the way he walks. Yeah, it is, it is quite a basic beat em up. Um, tactic that sort of works on pretty much everyone is the jump kick. The only problem, it doesn't take much energy. I think you get a little bit of sort of um, iframes just after you land the kick on the jump. We're taller and slim. See, you wouldn't even think he was on the same sort of level as you then, would you? King Cool. Nah, fly kick him to death now. Great, food when I didn't need it. The ending music on this is rather nice as well. I say there is five levels and there is you know, your obligatory massive boss at the end. Yeah. Come on. He's dead. This game could have done with um, a few more combos. Maybe a few extra moves. Like I said, maybe a back attack move. Ah, here comes the first boss, Mr. Lee. Don't know where he was supposed to be. Alright. Quite tricky is Mr. Lee. I cannot stand there and fight him. It just doesn't work. Jumped off to his death. Oh no, we don't. You can catch him in that loop if you if you're fast enough. You can catch him in that jump loop. Can got time it though. first level. So I won't show you too much of it. I'll try and make this uh, review a little bit smaller than normal. I'll show you a bit of the second level though. Then I'll um, we'll go back to the start screen and uh, I'll show you the other character. Show you a bit of Hawk gameplay. Yeah. Now you've got the little Chinese man called Little Sam and Jim Bob. <laughs> 
Little Sam and Jim Bob. Oh, old Jim Bob. <laughs> you don't have to look stupid. He's dead. Yeah. Right, I think what we'll do is, if I'm carrying on anymore, I'll um, show some gameplay of the other characters. You get to see both characters and uh, see what you think of uh, the first character's walk. Right, so back in a minute. Right, here we go. A bit of Hawk gameplay, I think. Big Hawk, it looks very much like Cody. As I just looked up as well, um, this did come out uh, after Final Fight. Final Fight was uh, 89. So they were trying to jump on the Final Fight bandwagon and, well, pretty much failed. This game's nowhere near as good as Final Fight. But, you know, it was a Sega beat-em-up. Sega, when it comes to the arcade beat-em-ups, they weren't massively known for it. They did release quite a few, though. So he doesn't walk quite as silly as the last guy, and he, he is a little bit faster. He does have an up attack move. He does have uh, like a jump. He goes. How effective is the elbow? He still walks a bit silly. So you can see Hawk is a little bit faster. I don't think he's as powerful though, but he, he's definitely a faster character. Right, is his kick just as powerful? Oh, don't expect now then. Yeah, uh, pick it off. Yeah, pretty much. Seems roughly about the same in power. He might be the character to use. Beat up the half naked, naked fat man. Why not? Don't know why he's half naked, especially in the ring. Pretty stupid. Gonna catch a terrible cold. Mm. Right, I'm gonna beat me up. Anyway, guys, so this is Riot City. Um, what do I think of this game? Is I think it's got pretty nice music. And the graphics are not bad, and it is a conversion of an arcade game, even though it's got a slightly different name. Um, they were obviously trying to compete with Final Fight, and they failed miserably, to be honest. Um, it's not exactly the greatest beat em up in the world, it is very basic. But I suppose at least it's um, a scrolling beat em up on the uh, PC Engine. It is that. If I and few between, to be honest. Um, it's an okay game. Like I said, the gameplay is a little bit boring. It does have good music. It's got better music in the arcade. Um, graphics are not bad. Uh, they're quite good in places. Can can They can look a little bit washed out in other places. But all in all, would I really recommend this game? Probably not. Um, I'd probably go giving it 6 out of 10. It, it's worth... It's worth having a go of or picking it up if it's cheap enough, just out of curiosity. But uh, I wouldn't go out your way to buy this game, to be honest. I don't really know how much it goes for these days. I, I'm playing the American version of it. Um, so, going as American PC Engine games or to graphics games, it probably goes for quite a bit of money these days. Um, yeah, just play it on an emulator or something. Or play it on, uh, if you've got one of those SS3 SD things. Uh, played on there, but yeah, not a bad game. Six out of ten, not the best great beat em up in the world, but uh, certainly not the worst beat em up in the world. Anyway, guys, so that's uh, right, uh, right zone. So I'll, um, I'll see you next week. Hopefully next week, um, Xeno Crisis is out on Tuesday, which will be the twenty eighth for this month. Um, 
That game does look really cool and it's got really good music. I have pre-ordered the uh, Neo Geo CD version and by the look of it, that is actually going to come out a little bit later. Same with the PlayStation version. I'm not sure what the different, what the sort of uh, release dates are for them, but it's supposed to be a little bit later. So I, I bought the Mega Drive ROM and that. So hopefully next week we'll have uh, a review of a brand new uh, Mega Drive game. So give me all week to have a chance to play through it, see how, see how good it is. But it, it does look very good, so check it out, Xeno Crisis, uh, made by Bitmap Bureau, I think the company is. Anyway guys, I'll see you soon, and hopefully see you next week. Bye now.